Well, good morning for the ninth day of Christmas. Yes, it isn't morning, is it? Not here. You can tell by the light quality. Uh, we've chosen deliberately to record this in the evening, in the dark, and partially by candlelight. You may be able to see two pillar candles on the altar table in the chancel behind me, and also a spiral of little nightlight candles there. And um, why? Because our theme today is stars and signs. And we have this rather lovely origami pinwheel star, mm. which was made by Liz. Thank you. Indeed. My pleasure. Every Christmas time, it seems, I read some new theory about what phenomenon lay behind the stories of the Star of Bethlehem. Was it a comet? Was it a supernova? And of course this year a lot of speculation about the possibility of a conjunction, planets coming very close together and seeming therefore so much brighter. Because we had, didn't we, the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn on the 21st of December. Now, I completely failed to see any of it. When I looked out, uh, the sky was just total cloud cover at the right time of the evening and in the right direction. Liz, I think you managed to spot it almost. Well, yes, it was the night before, but it was a clear night and I could see them. But So it wasn't quite the conjunction, but they were well on the way. Uh, well done, well done. We know so much more about what's going on in the heavens now, don't we? In one sense, I mean, we know what the chemical composition, for instance, of Jupiter and Saturn is, and we can send probes out to fly around them or even crash into them at the end of their working lives. But apart from that, most of us, when compared with our great, 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 great grandparents, are actually much less observant of the night sky. And not just because of light pollution in our towns and cities either. They were so much better acquainted with the seasonal motion of the stars, the flotillas of light in the night sky. And so it's no wonder at all that astrologer astronomers like the Magi, the wise men in Matthew's Gospel, should have looked to the stars for significant signs. Our music today is a carol, um, not one of the old traditional Victorian ones. This time it's uh, one of John Rutter's carols, one I've enjoyed singing myself, the candlelight carol. How do you capture the wind on the water? How do you count all the stars in the sky? How do you measure the love of a mother? Or how do you write down a baby's first cry? Let's listen to John Rutter's Candlelight Carol.
candlelight, angel light, firelight and star glow. And that's one of the reasons we chose to film in the semi dark today. Oh God, you made our hearts for stargazing and wonder. Surprise us, not only with your everyday epiphanies, but with those spectacular stellar moments when we just know that this journey is the right place to be. And be with all whose dreams have been trampled on by hardship and circumstance. May they, may we all, arise, shine, and know that our light has come. And let us be still in the silence and aware of the love with and within. O oh, Divine Presence, bless to us the luster of your signs and wonders, traces of our final home in land and sea and sky. As you've made the mark of heaven in a human face, may we see the imprint of your family likeness in every living thing, that your blessing might radiate each day and each night 
until heaven and earth are one. Well, I think it's about time that we blew out our candles, turned off our lights, and went to see if there's much to be seen through the clouds in the night sky here today. Until the 10th day of Christmas. Goodbye. Goodbye.